All right, we are live. We are live. Welcome, everyone. My name is Carlos Benson. For you, for those of you that don't know me, I'm a serial entrepreneur, and I help entrepreneurs all around the world grow and build successful food concessions businesses. And today, I'm uh, doing a live stream. As you can see, I'm at my favorite place. You see the beautiful water in back of me. And today, um, we're just going to have a live open Q&A session. If you have any questions, I'll answer your questions. Uh, what I want to start off doing is talking a little bit about um, how I got started into the business. Um, it's not that hard to get started in the food concessions business. And um, I know a lot of people that go out to festivals and certain events, they think it's hard to get started in the food concessions business. Or I'm sorry, they think it's easy to get started into the food concessions business because they see the little booth or the little trailer and they think, oh, I can do that. But it's a lot more involved than that. Um, and I learned the hard way. Um, it's a lot more involved. It's just like any other business. There's a lot of details. You got accounting. You got to keep your, uh, your records of your finances, your profit and loss. You got inventory. You got employees. So you got a many, many hats that you have to wear. So it's a lot more detailed than you think. And um, the way I got started into the business was, um, let's say back in about 2004, I, um, I got a second job. I saved up my little money. Uh, how you doing, Michael? Yeah, yeah, I decided to start doing videos um, on Sunday, doing a live Q&A. I th thought it would help people a little more. Um, yeah, so anyway, I got a second job and um, I saved up enough money and bought me a shaved ice cart and an ice shaver uh, from a company called Snow Shack out of Utah. Um, and they did right by me. They, they sold me some really good equipment but what I didn't do is I didn't do my research and um, I didn't realize that in Delaware, people don't really know what shaved ice is. They know what um, snow cones are, but they don't know what shaved ice is. And you know, shaved ice is like a more finely shaved ice, it kind of melts in your mouth. Snow cone is kind of chunky ice and it's kind of crunchy. And I didn't do really well with that business because I didn't do my research. Uh, I really didn't have any banners or any signage, so it really didn't go over well. Uh, so what ended up happening was I was set up next to a guy who had a, a, a huge Italian water ice business at a festival one day. And he saw me sitting there, wasn't making any money, and he had these long, huge lines. So he, start, he started explaining to me that I should try to get into the Italian water ice business. So that's how I got into the Italian water ice business. The next year, I ended up building some of uh, my own water ice carts. So that next season, I came out and I started selling Italian water ice. And that's how I ended up getting into the Italian water ice business. And later that year, I went on and I bought a van. It was an old beat up uh, ice cream van. And I, uh, I um, converted it into an Italian water ice truck. I think I paid 300 bucks for it. Uh, I went to Philadelphia, bought it from a guy who bought a new truck, drove it down here smoking, fixed it up, ended up turning it into a really nice Italian water ice truck. And I made a whole lot of money with that business. And um, ended up selling that truck for $5,000 um, and I ended up buying me a hot dog cart. That was my next move. And with, I bought that hot dog cart from a company called Willie Dogs out of um, Canada. I think they're out of Toronto, Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Really nice guy. Guy named Will Hodgkiss, I think. And um, that cart, man, that cart made me a lot of money. I started out doing festivals. I started out doing festivals and um, then I ended up getting a permanent location in front of a tire store. And um, the tire store ended up closing down, so I ended up um, doing festivals again. Eventually, I sold that cart and I started uh, working on building a bigger food concessions business. And I built that um, business up. Started I was selling a lot of different things: funnel cakes, Italian sausage, hot dogs, uh, fresh cut fries. And th the mistake that I made was I tried to buy a big food concessions business at that point instead of build a big food concessions business. And I think that's a huge mistake. Instead of trying to go out just because you have a lot of capital and buy a business, go out and start small and work your way into the business. That way you'll learn the business. And um, it didn't work for me buying, trying to buy. I bought this big, huge 10 by 20 tent, all this equipment, pizza ovens, deep fryers, you name it, I bought it. And uh, it just didn't work. Um, it was better when I was smaller. So what I ended up doing, I sold some of that equipment. 
I got out of the business after a while because my stepdad had passed and um, recently this last year I ended up getting back into the business. So um, that's my story, uh, a short version of it. Uh, what do we got out here? Trevor. Oh, no problem, uh, Trevor. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good luck on that. Uh, it's water ice, the same thing. Yeah, water ice is the same thing as Italian ice. Um, um, most people in Philadelphia um, call it water ice, but it's, 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 it's the same thing, Italian ice. Uh, do we ask questions? No, you can ask questions now. It's a live q and I just wanted to do this uh, uh, to try to get you guys questions answered, and I thought it would help. How you doing, Tessa? How you doing? Uh, you pay employees cash. I, I pay cash. I pay cash. Yeah. I pay cash. I uh, Most of my employees are my family, so, you know, I, it, it keeps it simple. My kids, my daughter, and uh, my son-in-law work with me. And, uh, yeah, okay. You guys can go ahead and ask whatever questions you want. Um, it's a live Q&A today. Any questions you want. Let's see what I'm Oh wow, you baked potatoes? Loaded baked potatoes? Oh wow, I never heard of that. See, that goes to show you that just going out there and being creative uh, can help you make a lot more money. What I think it sep sep um, separates you from the other vendors. If you're going out there being plain Jane, why should somebody buy from you? Why not just buy from the other guy? Both of you have the same thing. That's why I think like if you're doing funnel cakes, you know a lot of people do funnel cakes. Spice it up a little bit. Make make your funnel cakes um, funky. Oh, what I said. <laughs> okay, we should say we're going. Yep, keep it simple. Yeah, I um, I went to an event last week and uh, a guy was selling funnel cakes, but it was uh, it was like three or four other vendors, but he had all these different toppings, like five six other toppings, and he was getting most of the business. Just, just doing a simple thing like adding different toppings, just adding a little twist to your business will make the big difference. And also your signage, your signage. If, if other people have kind of rinky dink signage, your signage is not up to par and your signage is on point. I mean, your colors are really bright and vibrant. You'll kill them. You'll kill them. You're going to get all the business. Trust me. Yeah, we're Spain uh, to buy a trailer or a truck. You want me to explain a video on how to, how to, how to buy a trailer or a truck? I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. And these questions are going so fast. Yeah, like a lot of people, they want to um, they want to jump straight to a trailer or a truck. And um, if you got the money, that's good. But why not start out with a tent? Because when you try to invest in a trailer or a truck, you're going to be investing thousands and thousands of dollars. With a tent, you can get in the business for a lot cheaper, learn the business, and, and, and make the money to go buy your trailer and truck instead of using your money to go buy the trailer or truck. That's what I would recommend. I, I use a tent because, to me, this is only my personal opinion, and I think both of them work, tent or trailer. The tent, people like to see in that tent. They, they really like to see what you're doing. And then if you're putting on a show, they really can see you putting on that show and go extra, go overboard, like exaggerate your movements. If you're making a lemonade, just exaggerate everything. People love that. Like people are really, they're buying the show just as much as they're buying your product. Let's see. I know I'm missing some questions. Do you ever plan doing it for a year for options to booth and truck or truck? Yeah, pretty much in the concessions business, you're either going to buy, you're going to operate out of a trailer, a food truck, or a food booth. It, there's really not that many options. Um, some people have, like, I seen this one guy, he was selling, like, gyros, um, kind of like Greek food, and he had, like, a half tent, half trailer set up. I guess he had built it himself, and uh, the size just came up, and it was like a, a tent slash trailer, so you could be creative. Yeah. Uh, tents are more cozy yeah, I don't know when that uh, rain starts coming in or that wind starts blowing and your napkins and everything start blowing everywhere I really this thing is, sorry about that guys I don't know what just happened how much do commercial kitchens um, commercial kitchens 
if you know somebody that has a commercial kitchen, they probably won't charge you anything. So I would try to find somebody that I know that has a restaurant or a, a daycare facility uh, that has a commercial kitchen. Or if you have a, your, most churches have a commercial kitchen in it. So if you have a church, just go to your pastor or whoever and um, see if they'll sign your paperwork for you. I can get for a little snow rent. Oh, I'm sorry, Trevor, were you talking about using a commercial kitchen to actually cook out of or just for your comments, sir? I didn't understand the question. Actually, I just bought a new tent. Yeah. So what kind of tent did you buy, uh, Action? Because I bought a tent off of um, Amazon. Uh, I bought a little yellow tent. It's kind of flimsy. Um, it's time for me to get another one already. So when you when you buy your tent, you want to make sure you get a tent that's kind of sturdy. Uh, if you're getting just a pop up tent, um, I would suggest like an easy up because they're built really good and um, they can handle their um, beat up, be getting beat up. So the easy ups are good. I'm sure there's some other good brands out there. Oh, did we did. Hey, Jennifer. Yeah, a tent, a tent is much harder work. It's, it's definitely harder work. Uh, the time to set up and the time to tear down is, is much harder. Um, but I just kind of sacrifice it because I just believe that, um, people like to see the action inside the tent. You do be spending income, so. How much time? Uh, J Jennifer, uh, uh, commissary, I don't spend any time in the commissary. I just get the paperwork signed. I got on demand hot water system right at my tent. I wash all my utensils, you know, right there. Um, most people that sign your commissary, I don't think they would care if you came to wash your utensils or whatnot, but all I sell is popcorn and lemonade, so I don't have like a lot of uh, things to wash. So I just turn on the hot water and set up my sinks, um, set up and just wash all my stuff right there on spot. So I don't really spend time in the commissary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get, get the commissary. Ask somebody that, um, sorry about that, guys. Ask somebody that, um, like I said, that has a church or something and just um, sometimes if you give them a donation, it'll help persuade them to sign your commissary paperwork. Oh, I need a phone, a store batter under the phone. Um, well, how, how I store my batter, I got, um, have you ever seen the Italian water ice buckets? Uh, once I, I made my batter in those buckets. Um, my brother, his business is a little bigger than mine. He actually makes them in those, um, the 10, the five and 10 gallon of igloos. So all you gotta do is make it into igloos. You don't have to store it and keep it cold. Just mix your batter up, get it to the consistency of like pancake mix. And as long as it's at that consistency, once you get it there, you just pour, um, fill your, your pours up. Just keep two or three pours uh, filled up. You might have to put something over top of it if there's a lot of flies out there, but I never really had a problem with flies. And uh, just keep it, keep, keep them filled, keep them filled and keep that um, container filled up with mix if you're really, really busy. But if you're not busy, you don't want to have a whole bunch of mix because you don't want to um, end up wasting all those mix if you don't um, sell all the funnel cakes. Let's see. Yeah, I, I my, like I said, my funnel cake business, um, I did pretty good with it, but my brother is actually killing it. Um, he actually created these... Um, these honey buns and he has this cream sauce that he puts on it and he deep fries it. I'm telling you, these funnel, these honey buns are so good. You feel guilty after you eat them. And I, I mean, I, I hate to go around this booth because I always get one and they're so good and they're so bad for you. I just feel totally guilty. But I told him he should concentrate on selling the honey buns instead of the funnel cakes because those honey buns are 10 times better than the funnel cakes. Uh, no problem. Uh, mandatory. We have commissary at a restaurant. So you had a commissary at a restaurant? Okay, okay. Yeah, you got to be careful because if you do get a commissary at a place that ends up failing their health inspection, uh, there goes your commissary. So you want to make sure that it's a place that keeps their standards up and uh, passes a health, local health inspection. Because those restaurants go under health inspections too, like random health inspections. 
So you always want to make sure you're dealing with a place that's um, definitely keeping up the code. No, I missed some questions. Yeah. So I, I didn't, I don't know if I told you guys, I was thinking about getting me a truck, but I was going to do water ice. But the only thing is I want to add another product because it's hard to make money if you're only selling a product that costs $2. You got to have a huge volume if you're going to sell a product that, that's only one and two dollars. You want your every what I try to concentrate on is every time somebody comes and buys from me, I want to be bringing in at least seven to eight dollars. That's how you make money. So if you got a high volume in and everybody's spending seven, eight dollars, you're going to make money at the end of the day. Hey, 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 how you doing, Simmons? I'm glad you caught it. So you want to try to make sure your ticket price is. Um, seven dollars or up if you can get it to be twenty dollars that's even better but one and two dollars imagine how much how many customers you got to have to make money if if you're only bringing in two dollars every time somebody comes to buy and the work that you have to put out and i used to make that mistake when i was selling water ice back in the day i'm selling it for one and two dollars and i'm like man i'm only making five hundred dollars four hundred dollars but once i started getting larger size cups and selling four dollar cups the money started to improve greatly. I want to go to Charles Story Minimum. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. Go to a, um, I, I can't pronounce your name, Noir. I'm sorry, I'm butchering your name. But anyway, yeah, go to a trailer. If, if the, the tent is too much work, go to a trailer. Um, some people, they have uh, health conditions and they're older, and that tent is just too much work. So just get your small trailer and, um, just um, work out of a trail. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, you cooked the order, Jennifer. Okay, cut down on waste. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart. I mean, I see some of these guys. I've seen guys that um, they, they sell the turkey legs. And um, they were out at the African Festival, in, uh, African American Festival in Dover. They didn't sell one turkey leg. They had hundreds of turkey legs laid out on their... Um, their cooker didn't sell one the whole day. And I was like, man, what a waste of product. And uh, that, that goes to show like, you have to know your customers. You have to know your clientele. Like, for instance, you gotta know, if you go to a, a predominantly black festival, you probably don't wanna sell turkey legs. You understand what I'm saying? You might wanna sell fried fish sandwiches. You know what I mean? You got to cater to what people like. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to know, uh, like you might go to an area that the people don't have a lot of money. So you don't want to be going there selling funnel cakes that cost $10. You know what I mean? So you got to know your customers. So you got to do your, your planning and research before you go to the festival. Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a big waste. Too hard to maneuver. Yeah, if you don't if you don't know how to drive a trailer, um, it could be hard backing in. You'll get some vendors that are set up. You might ha you're, you get there late, and you're in between these two vendors. They won't move. So, how are you gonna get your trailer in there? Uh, with me, like a lot of times, I drive tractor trailers uh, for my day job, so I can drive a trailer pretty good. So my brother will get me to position his trailer for him. That's why you want to be there early, be first, be one of the first people there. That way you don't have to maneuver between people. You can go set your stuff up because um, some vendors, you know, they get there and, and they feel like they own the festival and they'll just lay all their stuff out there and take their time. And, and you have to wait until they move their stuff before you can move and get in your spot. So getting there early will help you to be able to avoid those situations. Let's see. Let's check it Caught the lie. Let's set my register. Uh, the register, um, I made a couple of videos talking about uh, cash, uh, where you put your, I use a cash box, I don't use a cash register. Um, in my opinion, I know some people do use cash registers, but I think a cash box is faster because cash register, you got to type in the amount and wait for it to open. I just want to open my box, give them their change and they can go. But what I do is I have I always build a countertop. That way I can have storage underneath the countertop and I have a place to set my cash box under the countertop. That way your customers are not looking into your box because most of us want to make thousands of dollars, right? So you don't want your customers to be looking in your box and see that you got $5,000 in your cash box. 
you know what I mean? Uh, there's hard times out here, you know, pe desperate people do desperate things. So you want to make sure your cash box is underneath your counter. You don't want them to be able to see inside of your cash box. Let's see, this thing is weird. Fresh gluten free. Oops. Yeah, Jennifer, just having um, mixing because a lot of people are health conscious these days. So it, 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 it'll pay to have some something that's health. Like, say, for instance, that you're selling Italian water ice, you might want to have a, a sugar free water ice for people that are diabetics. Uh, trust me, people do buy sugar free water ice. So being health conscious with some of your menu would definitely help you make more sales. You have a video on how to build. It. No, I bought a counter. I bought my countertop. It's a, actually, actually looks like a table. Uh, I can't remember the company, but I'll try to find it and put it in the link. Um, it's a company uh, out in California, and they just build a countertop that goes. And uh, sorry about that. It's a countertop that goes straight across the front of your booth, and it's ten by. It, it goes ten feet long, and it's about two and a half feet wide. And I just used that as my countertop because I was going to build a countertop, but. It just was too much uh, work and too much money to build one, so I just spent 160 bucks and bought the countertop. Oh yeah, yeah, I definitely take uh, credit cards. I use a uh, Square app. I bought the little Square chip reader. You want to make sure you get the chip reader because most people have the chip cards, and uh, that most people don't have just the cards that swipe anymore. So you want to that chip reader. I think cost me about 45, 50 bucks. And uh, it's worth every bit of money. You know what? I'm telling you, back in the day, I very rarely used a chip reader. But at my last few festivals, 30% of my sales was with a credit card and the chip card. So you got to get that chip reader. I'm telling you, you're going to miss a lot of money. You're gonna, uh, people are going to go to, and buy from somebody else. So you want to definitely get that chip reader. Yeah, just email. Just visit the website and send me a message. Uh, my email is right on the website. Cool thing. Uh, I didn't understand your question, uh, Jennifer. Oh, not so great. Yep, you're right. Action. Yeah, you definitely want to make sure that um, you got to get that. You don't have to get the square reader, but you definitely have to get a credit card reader. Uh, I think uh, PayPal has a, a credit card reader too, so you can grab that from PayPal. Uh, they actually have a free one just for the swipe, but you definitely want to get one that has um, the chip reader. So, uh, what about? Oh yeah, yeah, you could buy some fans. You definitely want to buy fans if you're uh, working out of a, t a tent, so you can keep cool and keep your um, your workers cool. Google Apple. Okay, Google Apple Pay. So Google Apple Pay has a, a chip reader. I didn't know they had a chip reader. Finding the events closing. Okay, I missed this question. This thing is so weird. It's private, please. Okay, you can you can also get um go through the bank and just get a re regular credit card um reader. You can use it with the chip reader. Okay. Yeah. It's Square and PayPal are not the only options to uh, take credit cards. Just go Google uh, credit card reader, accept credit cards, and you'll get a million different companies. That, um, a lot of those companies are going to make you run a credit check, though. So you got to make sure your, credit, your credit's on, on point. Sugar. These questions are going so fast, I can't even keep up with them. Hey, my name is Newbie Vance down in Miami, hard to find events. Uh, Addy, you can find events. Um, just go to your, um, go online and just, and look up the uh, Festival Finder. And they got an app, um, it's a website called Festival Finder, and they have all the events in your area. They'll, they won't have every, each event, but they'll have most of the major events in your area. It's getting windy out here. Yeah. All right, guys, you got any more questions? Uh, I don't want to keep you all too long on this beautiful Sunday. I got a, I got a meeting. Red flags for shady. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 
event coordinators, a lot of them are, are shady. They just want your money. They don't care if you make money. Uh, that's why you got to do your own homework when you're looking for events. So, um, you want to definitely ask them uh, how many people come to the event and how many years the event's been going on. And you can, um, you can follow up with that. Look on Facebook and look at their pictures of the event. You'll see how many people were at the event. Because they always have videos online and pictures of the event from the a prior year. And you can see how many people were actually at the event. And don't let them put you in any spot. If you get to an event and you're not happy with your spot, go to the event coordinator, let them know you want to be put in a different spot. Don't let them put you on the end and don't let them put you at the very beginning of the event. Nobody buys from the first person uh, that they walk past at the festival. So don't be afraid to tell them that you, you would like to move. Not saying that they will move you, but I definitely would talk to them and let them know I wasn't happy with the spot. Um, let me see. Eight eight dollars. Uh, I would say that it's according to what event you're at. Um, I would adjust my price according to uh, the area. If you go to an uh, area where it's low income, you might only want to charge five dollars. But if it's a, um, I've seen people charge ten dollars for funnel cakes in high income areas. Uh, no problem, investor. Uh, hey, Julio, how you doing? You from Houston? What events you doing down there? Let's see. Oh, no problem. Yeah, it's not crazy, but we're so I know you guys are doing a lot of events out there. It's the 4th of July. It's like five, six, seven events all week long. You could do an event each day, each day of the week. Now's the time. If, if there's a time to get money, now's the time because during the week of the 4th of July, you got events on the 3rd, the 4th, the 5th, 6th, 7th. And some of those um, coordinators will let you in at the last minute. They will take your money, trust me. So go out there, um, don't be afraid to call it the last minute. Especially if you got a good relationship with your health inspector. If you have a good relationship with the health, health inspector, they'll let you in uh, past those seven days. You just gotta build that relationship. Oh yeah, yeah, the health department will shut you down, trust me. They shut me down uh, back in like 2002. I set up, um, in front of this flea market. Um, the flea market uh, person that owned it said I could set up there. I didn't even have my health permit. So I just went up there with my shaved ice cart and set up there. I was up there for two, three weekends. And then one weekend, the health department came up there on a, a Saturday, asked to see my health permit. I didn't have it. They shut it down. So they will shut you down if you don't have your permit. Oh, you're in Miami? Oh, man. That's where I wish I was right about now. Summer has been slow. So you said the summer's been slow? Well, I guess it's according to uh, what events you're going to. Um, you just got to pick it wisely. Like, God, I'm telling you, don't waste your time at events that don't have any people. Make sure that the event has a decent amount of people because you'll be sitting around all day mad. You didn't make any money. You didn't put all this work in. I've been there and done that a thousand times. You don't want to do that. Make sure that you do your research. Make sure that there's at least, at least 3,000 people at the event. And that's a small event. You don't want to go to an event that it's the first year. The only time I would go to an event that it's the first year is if they say I'm the only food vendor. Then it doesn't matter. They can have a couple hundred people and you might make good money. But I wouldn't go to an event and... Um, if it's the first year and they have, because they're going to try to get 50, 60 vendors to make their event look good. We don't have a trailer yet. It's still sitting in the yard. Okay, Jennifer, that's good. You can, let, us, let us know when you get that trailer up and running. Send some pics too. So I want to start posting you guys' pics too. Uh, I don't really do parties. I just do festivals, fairs, and events like that. But I, if, if you can do parties, I would do them if your business is set up for them. I have uh, one of my subscribers. His name is Bernie. He does corporate events, parties, and he seems to be doing really, really good. He actually sells funnel cakes. 
All right, guys, um, I'm about to wrap this thing up. I appreciate you guys uh, joining me. I'm gonna start doing these videos uh, on every Sunday live Q and A uh, between two and two thirty. Uh, so if you want to tune in, um, you want to learn more, I'll be on here. Uh, don't forget, I have um, I have the membership program. You can go on site if you want to join me um, and um, get one on one coaching calls. And um, we have a private Facebook group. You can go on the website and check it out: www.mobilefoodbooth.net. And uh, I thank you for your support, and um, I'll see you guys next week.